guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I am diving into Generations Math 2. This is one you guys have been asking me to flip through and review lately, so I'm finally going to do it. I did a video on Generations Math 1 not too long ago. That's the math curriculum we're using this year for my first grader. Um, we actually started using it last year, so we're about halfway through, and we will probably jump into this about halfway through this school year. I'm also super excited because actually just yesterday I got my hands on Generations Math three and I will be sharing that with you as well in another video. Please let me know in the comments if that's something that you are interested in seeing. But today, math two. Before I start the actual flip through, let me talk a little bit about what's different about Generations Math Curriculum and why I'm loving it for my youngest son. First and foremost, this is math taught with the purpose of glorifying God. This is a math curriculum where your kids are going to see scripture in front of their eyes on the pages. Um, the other day on Facebook, I forget what group I was in, but a homeschool mom was asking for Christian math curriculum recommendations. She was getting lots of great recommendations. And then I saw one comment that simply said, why does math need religion? Why does math need religion? Well, I rarely comment on Facebook posts. I tend to be more of a lurker on social media, but there are occasions where I will feel prompted to respond. And this was one of those occasions. I had to respond because whoever asked this, it used to be me. In fact, I was a high school math teacher who didn't think that God had anything to do with math. I didn't really even have a biblical worldview at the time, so I didn't think God had anything to do with anything that was being taught in school, really. So I would have asked this question. And for many people, just like this person, religion in math just sounds unnecessary, right? Like faith belongs in Bible time and math is just facts and formulas. Keep them separate. This idea actually has a name. I learned this from one of my pastors and I thought it was so interesting. It's called the two-story view. I think it was Francis Schaefer that talked about this and wrote about this. The two-story view or fact value split basically splits life into two levels. So think of a house and the lower story is facts, reasons, and all the so-called neutral subjects like math, science, and history. This is the stuff that the world says is totally objective and doesn't have anything to do with God. And then you have the upper story, which is faith, values, religion, things that the world sees as private and personal. So nice for you if you believe it, but not really relevant for real life. Here's the problem. That's not how the Bible describes reality. Scripture doesn't split life into sacred and secular. Colossians 1, 16 through 17 says that all things, not just spiritual things, but all things were created by him and for him and that in him all things hold together. That means that math is his, science is his, art, history, language, it's all his. So if we buy into this two-story idea, even without realizing it, we might end up teaching math as if it exists just fine without God. And the danger there is that our kids can start to think, okay, God's word matters for church and devotions, but not for the rest of life. And that's just not true. Here's the reality, and this is pretty much how I responded to that Facebook post. The only reason we have math is because of who God is and how he created the world. Math isn't something humans just invented. It's built into creation. The order, patterns, and consistency we see in numbers are a reflection of his nature. Two plus two will always equal four, not because someone decided that it would, but because God is a God of truth and truth doesn't change. Geometry works because he made a world with shape and space and structure. Patterns exist because he's a God of beauty and design. And math isn't just paper and pencil problems, although yes, we do a lot of that to practice math skills, 
but math is how we measure, explore, and describe God's creation. When we calculate how long it takes the earth to travel around the sun, we are seeing his precision. Every year we can see this. When we build something, we're using principles he's woven into the fabric of the universe. I really didn't understand a lot of this until I began homeschooling, and there were so many great curriculum publishers and other homeschooling parents that I learned from, and it makes me realize why I always struggled when my students would ask me in our secular high school classroom, why do we have to learn math? I never had an answer that satisfied them or that satisfied me. But when we approach math in order to know God more and glorify him, everything changes. When I went to school, I grew up in public school and my reason for learning math was to get good grades. I was often prideful because I was great at math and I did really well at it. But this should never be the case. We can do it differently and have a better answer for our kids when they ask, why do I have to do this? I think using a biblical worldview-based curriculum when our kids are young especially is so helpful if you want to make these connections consistently. And that's one of the reasons that I love Generations. They weave biblical worldview elements into the curriculum. They put scripture on the pages. They aim to show kids that math can help them to be doers of the word, not just hearers. So kids aren't just learning how to do math. They're learning why it matters, how it points them back to God and how they can use it to steward creation and serve others. Okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox here, flip the camera around and actually show you what is inside Generations Math 2. If you watched my Math 1 flip through, you're going to recognize a similar structure in this book as far as how it's laid out and how the lessons are formatted. The table of contents is very basic. A lot of math textbooks will have each lesson and topic listed in the table of contents. This book does not, um, but they do have a page here where they tell you what the course includes and all of the topics that will be covered, which I think looks pretty typical for a second grade math book. There are 36 weeks of lessons included 150 days of content and everything is in this one book, which I love. No extra teacher guide, no separate answer key. Everything is scripted and ready to go. You can use the schedule here to keep track of the lessons you covered. There are typically four lessons each week and then a day for practicing memory work, which is really important at this stage. The answer key is in the back of the book. And there are also two pages in here that you can copy and cut out to use for manipulatives, but they also recommend having these manipulatives um, on hand to use during this course. It's pretty standard. You probably already had a lot of this stuff at home. You don't really need anything complicated as far as manipulatives go. Okay, so chapter one is called Remembering God's Creation in Math. There are 12 chapters total, and you'll see that each chapter is going to have a little introduction explaining what you are going to learn. In this chapter, kids are gonna kind of review a lot of what they did in math one. I like how this starts off right away with answering the question of why we should learn math, how it helps us learn more about God's world, learn more about God, and use math to serve others. I think that starting with that big picture purpose makes all the difference before you dive into the day-to-day -day lessons. So this book is really easy to follow. Each lesson is labeled with the day number at the top of the page so you know where to begin and end. So for day one, you'll start on this page and you will work until you get to day two. And when you see purple boxes like this, these are tips for you as the parent, any instructions that you're gonna need. And then um, many days begin with a short prayer and just a reminder to pray. I really like this. It's such a good habit to begin building, to pray before we jump into anything, right? Including our schoolwork. Now the lessons, like I said earlier, are scripted. And by that, I mean that you don't really have to prep anything to teach. You can just open up the book and read from the book to your child. Um, at this age, you're probably still going to be working with your child, 
maybe not. Maybe if they can read really well and are independent, they could do this on their own, but you're probably going to be doing this with them. So you'll just begin reading through the lesson. And sometimes I don't read all of the text. Sometimes I'll just kind of rephrase it as I go. I usually will write some of the things on our whiteboard to highlight certain things. But if you wanted to, you could just read right from the text. Um, you've got some student exercises after the lesson portion so kids can practice what they're learning. And that's pretty typical for each lesson. You're going to have a lesson portion and then those student exercises. Memory work is pretty important, so you're often going to have prompts um, to work on memory work. Typically, this will be flashcards. When you purchase this curriculum, you can purchase just the book or you can order flashcards with it. Um, you may have flashcards at home that you can use, or I highly recommend this Math Facts app. My son loves this app. Honestly, I'm not quite sure why because it's not flashy. It's super simple and just lets him drill on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division facts. If you're not opposed to using an app, this is so much simpler than trying to flip through flashcards. It's free and it was designed by a dad who wanted something like this to use with his first and fourth grade kids. So I highly recommend it. When they can, the authors in this book are going to use relevant examples from scripture to highlight and show math concepts. Here you have some scripture from Judges to help introduce a lesson on subtraction. And I like this. I don't think it comes across as, you know, just putting scripture on the page for the sake of putting scripture on the page and calling it a Christian curriculum. I think that Generations really does recognize that math is a gift from God and we can learn math from God's word. And they really put thought into how scripture can show these concepts. Plus, yes, let's get scripture before our eyes, even in math, that's a good thing. Um, now, of course, kids are going to need to practice doing math and have some repetitions in the problems that they're solving. But I like how they use God's word to show um, how what we're doing all comes from him. Practice days are woven in to keep skills fresh. So you have a little bit of that spiral review that you'll see in here. And then this is an example of kids using math around the house. This is a very basic example because it's just counting, but I love the intention of making math applicable and useful. Here is another example from this chapter. Kids are going to be doing some data collecting. And then every chapter is going to end with some application suggestions to help integrate math into their home or community. Um, whenever you're able to do these, I think it can really help with retention of math facts that are learned in the chapter. I have found this with math one as well as I've been working through it with my son. The lessons are a really good length. They're not too long, not too short. I think they're just enough to get the point across and have enough to practice. Um, there's a lot of review built in. You're probably noticing that the lessons kind of alternate. You'll have a new lesson and then you'll have a day or two of review, a new lesson, and then a day or two of review. I think this book is colorful and interesting and there are a lot of fun activities throughout. There are also a few of these extra challenge pages sprinkled throughout. So if you have a child that's ready for a little bit more, or wants that extra challenge, you can work on these pages with them. I really do think that this curriculum can be modified for a wide variety of learners, from kids who might struggle with math to kids that pick it up quickly because it's pretty adaptable. You can let your child fly through it or slow it down if you need to and really make it work to fit your needs. Um, I like this example, adding up prices on the menu and the reminder to thank God for the food and the money to buy it. And here is the end of chapter two, the application activity options. This, is the, this example talks about spending and earning money. Um, this one has a little example about budgeting. And then you also have some extra challenge problems. I hope this is giving you a good picture of what this curriculum is like. 
Some of you might be thinking this looks perfect for your child. And some of you might be thinking that this would be a terrible fit for whatever reason. And that's okay. I know there are some things that my son really loves as we're working through math one and some things he has a hard time with, such as, you know, sometimes he doesn't want to sit and listen to me do some of the reading. He just likes to get to the problems and do the math. But I personally really love how the biblical worldview is presented in this book from the scripture to the little reminders for prayer um, to the different principles woven through the examples. So even if I don't always read everything to my son word for word during our lessons, I feel like it really helps me to understand and appreciate math more from that biblical worldview. And I have the tools and language to use when I'm working with my son or even my other kids on our lessons. I love the tie-ins to music. Um, just like in math one, the authors recognize that strong link between music and math. So there are some lessons that incorporate music into them, which is so fun. And there are also a few fun links to games like chess and Sudoku in a few places. Multiplication is a big thing for this grade. So I wanted to just flip through a few pages to show you how multiplication is taught. There is a new lesson here and then a little bit of review. Notice the, the carry and borrow language. That's how I learned to add and subtract. So I have to say, I like that. This tells us that the lesson is going to be teaching multiplication using manipulatives. And if you want to, you can copy and use those manipulatives that are at the back of the book. I do love how many of the lessons start out with using manipulatives and concrete objects as often as possible. They'll um, also use lots of pictures in the book to represent concepts. And then they move into the abstract um, numerals and practice problems. This is a great way to learn math as using those manipulatives will be really helpful for a lot of kids. And then of course, a big emphasis on memorizing the math facts once they understand what they're actually doing when they multiply. Here are the activities at the end of this chapter. Again, I love how it's helping kids put into practical practice what they're learning about multiplication. Okay, so I'm not going to flip through every single page for you. This video would go on forever, but as I've been going through it, I'm honestly amazed at how much they've packed in here. It's not just page after page of worksheets. There's so much variety and so many different ways of helping kids really understand what they're learning. And it's truly not just about checking the math box for the day. There's this constant undercurrent of how can we use this? How can we see God in this? Um, the goal is to connect math to real life and to God's design. And I think that makes the curriculum so rich. Some days are short and sweet. Others are a little bit longer. Some have basic problems to work through and some have hands-on projects or real life scenarios to work through. And I really appreciate that balance because it keeps things fresh and interesting for kids and honestly for us parents too. So hopefully you are getting a sense of just how intentional and adaptable this curriculum is. It's the kind of book I think um, could work for so many different kids, whether they need more review, love a good challenge, or fall somewhere in between. And I just love that in the process, they're not only learning math, but they're learning to see it as part of something much bigger and learning to glorify God in all they do. Okay, you guys, hopefully that gave you a real feel for how Generations Math 2 works day to day and why I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to use this with my son once we are done with Math 1. I'll definitely keep you posted on how it goes once we're actually in the trenches with this one. If this was helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help other homeschool moms find videos like this and it's an easy and free way to support my channel. You'll find links in the description to Generations Curriculum so you can head on over there and check out everything they have to offer and learn more about how they can come alongside you and support your goals of teaching your kids through a Christian discipleship method. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.